Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you 12 August to Monday. After 10 days away um, in uh, in northern Italy, a place that I that I love. It's very dear to my heart. Very old-fashioned place, quiet, um, good old-fashioned mountain living. Really enjoyed my time there with my family, uh, but now we're back, uh, back full steam and ready for the last third of this year. Let's just get right into this. Look at these charts. A lot happened, uh, and a lot is happening. So let's um, let's get right into it. Just looking at this uh, sterling yen chart here to begin with, even though it's not on the radar today. It's just worth noting that the um, Major, major, major sterling yen lows are 117.41. Um, so for those of you who are thinking about fading this sterling move or, or fading this, technically there's really no reason to here. Um, we are a bit oversold, but in this kind of conditions where we're risk off and sterling is having its Boris problems, um, hard Brexit issues, this uh, still has a long way to go. So um, just want to say be careful if you're trying to fade sterling yen. We, we did get quite a few inquiries about fading sterling yen. We do not suggest uh, this as a good idea currently. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, uh, let's look at stocks. Kind of stumped us there uh, at 28.50 last week. Big, big tail. Um, really caught us off guard. Uh, we thought that this was going to get down through this 27, this key 27.30 area. But we bounced off the 200 day. Um, in that 27.80.90 area. And here we are. So now we'll. Uh, you just have to watch out. At the minimum, we expect some consolidation up here. Um, the bear case technically is a lot weaker. The bear taste, the bear case fundamentally is is still very very strong. Um, what we'll be looking to do this week is to see if we can uh, make a move up to this 2970 area, uh, which we will re-engage uh, with some shorts. Their stocks. Euro, we have no news out today. We've been in this little sideways motion, 111.70, the downside, top side. Um, a lot of people are going to be drawing this line here, this little pennant now. Um, the downside is driven by uh, worries about, about Italy. Top side is, is being worried, is being driven by uh, worries about Trump and the US economy in general. This little pendant is, is worth trading. Um, there'll be no real reason to trade it today, I don't think, super, super quiet uh, as far as releases and as far as what's gonna drive this thing. Uh, but it's just something to keep an eye on. At the, um, at the absolute edges of the doji from last week. This here we have. Um, sorry, the doji, the daily. Uh, we have uh, one twelve fifty and one eleven sixty eight. So these are these are kind of the key levels here uh, in euro dollar. Dollar Swiss is a little more interesting, um, even though it's not great to trade. Where is she? 96.90. This is a break trade now, very similar to this level here, uh, which was 98.05. Uh, this will coincide with uh, risk off. Uh, general bad news Euro Swiss will be getting smashed. Um, and the dollar, US dollar, will be getting hurt. Could be some Trump comment about dollars. It could be could be any number of things. Um, 
it's getting quite awkward down here uh, like sterling yen a lot of people are trying to fade this it's too early to fade this have a look at the weeklies you can see there's you know 96 cents means nothing in dollar swiss it starts getting twitchy below 90 cents um, and it starts getting twitchy above 104 so we're in the bigger picture we're just in the middle of nowhere so through um, through 9690 we'll see 9550 uh, pretty quickly we think so this is an old-fashioned break trade 90 9690 let's look at this Aussie uh, got smashed in sympathy with um, the Kiwi cut now has printed a very long tail and a doji on the weeklies uh, we're looking for consolidation here this is a sell between 98 uh, 6830 and 6860 uh, um, and then we will wait till we see more risk off um, before we really start getting active on the short side because you just have to be super wary of this bar very much like the equity bar um, this looks like change in trend down here I don't think it's going to be change in trend but technically you just have to be cautious what else is out there? Um, dollars are, yeah. That thing got smashed. Little bit of FOMO on this side in the sense that we didn't trade dollars are from four on the entire 14 handle. Um, so last week, obviously, this thing went from 1450 up to 1530. Um, again, no reason to fade this yet. This looks like it's going to hit 1570 pretty quickly, and and why shouldn't it get up here to make these new highs? We're in this risk-off, higher volatility um, atmosphere. Um, no reason to try and pick tops in dollars are. I'm not sure where to buy it yet today. We're just going to wait and see. Maybe this will settle down a little bit, um, but dollars are. Uh, as would typically happen during risk-off periods, is getting smashed. Finally, dollar CAD. This came off pretty hard. Uh, same weekly bar as the Aussie, so that's a bit of a worry. But we're still uh, negative on CAD. We got this nice little slip move through the figure late on Friday, um, taking out some some week longs. This is a generally uh, buy on dip or accumulate on the long side um, position. You can express it through short CAD yen, um, or you can express it express it through long Euro CAD. We've been talking about both of these these positions for a couple of weeks. Um, we left FOMC short CAD yen. That was way up on the 84 handle. Um, and Eurocad will find very strong support in this key uh, 14720 area. So um, the best way to express CAD weakness is through the crosses. Um, but that being said, this cross action is going to create um, some support in dollar CAD. So let's keep that in mind. Finally, dollar CNH. Uh, if you missed the break through seven, uh, which we did. Uh, you're just going to use it as a barometer here, a risk barometer. Obviously, as we get towards 710, um, this is risk off, and it's going to create some hysteria. As we get back towards 7 or below 7, um, this is the all clear sign that things things are better. Uh, we seem far from that, but you have to be able to keep be open minded and look both ways. One last thing, uh, Euro Norway. We weren't around to talk about it last week, but this is hysterically over overbought and overvalued. Um, we're not suggesting hit 995s today, but you can sell into 10, into the 10 handle. Um, this should mean revert. Norway is a country that is the least likely to cut rates in the world. Um, so this, uh, we really like this fundamentally, 
and now technically to mean revert back towards 960. All right, I've said enough now. Um, like I said, quiet day today as far as uh, news. We have a um, little bit of RBA, BS, very, very late tonight. In fact, that's Tuesday morning, European time, and nothing else really. So we're expecting a quiet day. Uh, we have to be careful here at Privateer after 10 days away not to uh, dive in here too quickly. So we're going to sit and wait and be patient, focusing on that dollar Swiss level, um, and then also focusing on that pennant in Eurodollar. Good luck out there, people. We will talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.